Hey guys, what is up? Quacker here for another C++ tutorial. Uh, today we are basically just going to go over uh, data types. So data types are basically different ways for you to store you know, data in your program. And for those of you who are already familiar with programming, this is probably very basic for you, but I'm going to go over it anyway. So you can skip this video if you want. So we're going to start off with one of the most simple basic types, which is called a char. And let's go ahead and say, um, I'll just call it character. I don't know. So anyway, uh, a char stores any uh, character of a, you know, A to Z, um, basically anything that is a single letter or single number or single value of uh, text, I guess is how you could say it. So we could do char character equals A, we could do char another equals B, um, et cetera. So it's a good way if you want to specify something like maybe their middle initial. Uh, middle initial equals, you know, M. And it's usually specified with single quotes. Uh, just another thing to keep in mind. And you can usually directly compare it with um, integers because each character has its underlying integer representation in ASCII. Um, so to talk about integers, I guess, is the next step is it's basically called int and it stores a number and it stores a whole number. Uh, so no decimals or anything like that. And a normal int like the one you see here can go from negative 2.17 ish billion to positive 2.17 billion. So we can do something like int, you know, grade for a grade on a test equals uh, 100. So it's basically a way to store a number. If you do something like int grade equals 95.5, that is incorrect. Um, I'm pretty sure that'll either not compile. Yep. Oh, let's see. It'll either not compile or it'll just completely cut off this, this 95 value. So if I do stdc out grade two, let's go ahead and get this care. I believe it'll just cut it off. Yep, 95. So if you try and set something with a decimal to an integer, um, that just won't work. So it's basically a way to store whole numbers. And if you try and go over the maximum, so this might be something you see in the news, you might hear something called integer overflow. Basically, if this number exceeds that 2.17-ish billion, um, it'll go all the way back and go negative 2.17-ish billion. So that's not usually a good idea. If you want uh, to store numbers that are very, very, very large, you'll have to use another data type. And that other data type is called a long. And a long is basically an integer, like you can hold whole numbers, but you get a lot more space to hold numbers. So you can uh, hold a much, much, much larger number. I don't know the maximum off the top of my head, but unless you're really concerned about having ginormous numbers, you should be pretty good using a long. So do not fear. So you can use something like large grade equals, you know, some really big number. Um, <laughs> I'm just not going to write that. But okay. Um, anyway, so long, think of long as, you know, a, a larger version of int. So the next one would be a float. So a float is basically a way to specify a decimal number. So let's do, you know, decimal grade equals 95.5. So this will actually print. If we do this and this run, that'll actually print 95.5. So it's basically a floating point representation of a number. But this often isn't very isn't used very often because its representation is is kind of inaccurate. So if you try and compare floating point numbers to each other, you often won't get the correct comparison. So the best way to actually do it is to use what's called a double. And a double is for <coughs> excuse me is for double. It's called a double precision floating point, and it's basically a much more accurate. Uh, much larger version of a float. So if you want to use decimals at all, um, just pretty much stick to a double. Um, if you really are not sure, use a double. Otherwise, if you're sure it's going to be a whole number, use an integer. Um, so you can do something like, uh, I don't know, decimal number equals 0.122, but boom. Now, and you can go ahead and print that, boom, boom. 
run that. Oh, look, it truncated it because, you know, printing truncates things often, but you get the general idea. Okay, so the next one is probably something you've, you've seen a lot in my tutorials so far, and that's called a bool. So bool, am I awesome? <laughs> of course, true. So bools can either be true or false, one or zero. Um, they are super useful, probably one of the more used, most used data types, maybe except the integer, I don't know. But um, there, that this will be what you see often in things like if statements, am I awesome, you know, then do something. Um, and they have a lot of other, um, basically, see what are they called a lot of elements associated with it with uh, if statements so you can do something like am I awesome and you also want to check basically um, am I cool if you want to uh, have two uh, different bools compared in the same um, if statement you can either use an and so this will say if this first bool is true and this double ampersand here uh, specifies a logical and and am I cool, then it'll execute whatever's in this if statement. So let's go ahead and show that. Because I am both cool and awesome. Getting some. Cool. I am cool. But if, for instance, we changed, oh no, I'm no longer cool. Go ahead and print that. Nothing prints because. Uh, this logical and means everything in this if statement, each of these variables must be true. Now there's another one called or, and this basically says if either of these things, if either of these, you know, there could be many, many more in this if statement, if either of them are true, then execute the code in here. So as you may guess, if I run this, you know, oops, of course I hit the wrong button. Let's go ahead and build this. Yes, I want to stop debugging. Boom, I am cool. So that's another one, and you can also do things like if you have this decimal grade here and you want to create a bool off of this decimal grade. Basically, if you want to say, okay, if I have um, achieved a certain grade on a test or something, I want to also print I am cool. So you can do something if decimal grade is greater than 90. Um, let's just do 90.0, so we're comparing decimal values. So this itself here, this construct, this greater than, creates a bool when it, when it compares these two values together. And because decimal grade is actually greater than 90, it will print I'm cool. So um, there's several different, um, you know, comparators like this. You can do something like less than. So because uh, this is not less than, it will not print I'm cool. And you can also have things like greater than and equal to which will do direct comparisons, less than or equal to. And then you can have double equals, which is uh, exact values. So out of curiosity, will this work? Again, I, I told you before, I'm very, very hesitant about directly comparing um, floats because they're often inaccurate. But you know, with this small decimal points, it actually does work. Um, as you see, I changed 95.5 here, and we directly compared it. And because they're equal, it printed out cool. And it can do something like not equal. So if I do 95.51, this will also print out I'm cool because 95.5 does not equal 95.51. Uh, that was a lot of words, but hopefully you understood it. <laughs> Boom. So as you can see, we had greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, less than or equal to, equals, equals, and not equals. I think that covers all of the ones I said. And you can have all the various things that act on bools, like ifs. Let's see, we have ifs, fors, whiles, and dos, which I believe we have covered all of these in previous tutorials. So if you're unfamiliar with any of these, make sure to watch some of the previous ones. And there's a little more, more complex uh, ternary operators, which I will probably cover in a different tutorial since uh, they might, they're like not really used very often and not super useful. So um, yeah, that is it for this tutorial. You know, there's something very simple just to give a general rundown of some of the more common, you know, built-in data types. There are also many other data types that are not directly built into C++ that people create, such as strings. Um, strings are basically composed of an array of characters. That's their underlying implementation. They use this built-in data type and they create a new data type out of it. So we'll be going over, you know, all those other data types. I just wanted to give a general rundown of like the most basic ones. 
And that's it for this tutorial. Make sure to watch all my other ones. Uh, thank you so much. It's Quacker signing out.